Tuscany Valley. This is Falcon Crest Retro Review, Season 2, Episode 17. So listen, we left off, I know it was a while back, but we left off, Lanston left Falcon Crest, and now he is living full-time with his girlfriend down to the, down to the, um, San Francisco. He ain't got no job, and he don't have no money, okay? He is not understanding that he is no longer living the life of a leisurely bachelor, whose grandmommy puts money in his account every week, okay? And she is, like, on him to get a job. She was like, you know what? This was all cute and everything when you weren't here all day, every day, and I was getting up and going to work, and you had money. Like, and I don't even think, like, you had money, like, like, she was, like, needing his money, but, like, you could buy your own dinner money. You know what I'm saying? Um, over to, um... I mean, down to uh, Maggie and Chase's house. Chase is still chasing after whoever killed um, Aunt Gretty. And he's got the private investigator. Now, Maggie is not feeling this private investigator at all. Maggie is like, listen, um, I think he's playing games with you, Chase. I don't think it's real. You know, and, you know, she's still mad because she feels like what Chase is doing is really putting, excuse me, putting all of them in jeopardy. Because she said somebody really did try to kill Cole, and it's because you keep sniffing around. Now, mind you, Chase was just down to the sheriff's office telling the sheriff he don't know how to do his job. And that if he won't do his job, he's going to do it for him. So Maggie is just fed up. She tired of Chase running around, chasing after um, the bad guy. She was like, let the police do their job. She doesn't trust the, the private investigator because she was like, listen, I don't know. He talk a whole lot of talk, but he ain't really producing a whole lot of nothing. Then Chase is mad at Maggie because Maggie is about to go on a business uh, travel with the director of the film, a.k.a. the guy that tried to seduce her. So he ain't feeling it. And Maggie is like, listen, Chase. I understand that this is not the most optimal situation, but I done already told you, I don't want that man. I ain't going to do nothing with that man. This is all business. Now, listen, I understand where Chase is coming from. You're not going to sit here and tell me that you almost had an affair with somebody and then, um, then you flying all over the place and you having business and you working with them and stuff. Like, we're not playing that game. No ma'am, no sir. Mm -mm, no ma'am, Pam. So I feel where Chase is coming from. And Maggie is just over the whole thing. Maggie is over it, okay? And she is ready to move forward. All right. Now, Richard is having a party, okay? He's inviting the who's the who and the what's what. And, of course, he wants everybody to come to his party because you know he got that new house, right? And he's actually doing renovations on this new house. And he done pulled old boy in um, the, the county guy that he got on his payroll. That's messing, the guy that's messing with, um, oh shoot, now I can't, I can't think of the girl. Y'all know who I'm talking about. Uh, Chase and Maggie's daughter, the one I don't like. Y'all know who I'm talking about. And he wants the county to cut off this road that technically is on his property but it's like you know how it's like a it's like a thing where the the previous owner pretty much let everybody ride down that road he didn't close the road um but richard is like no i'm gonna close this road because i'm trying to force the vineyard behind me out of business so i can buy up all this property and own all of the land well he don't really want to do it because he know that Richard, he know he done made a deal with the devil and he understands now that Richard is just going to keep coming back, coming back, coming back, coming back, coming back, coming back until there's just nothing left for him to give. Um, and so he know, I, I think he's going to end up double crossing Richard. I just don't know when, where, and how. 
Now, Angela is down to Falcon Crest talking to Julia. She is not happy about anything that's going on, the fact that Lance ain't back, um, and what's going on between Lance and Maggie, I mean, um, Lance and, um, um, Melissa and all of that. And he tells, um, Julia, she tells Julia, like, listen, um, I really don't have no use for Lance. He can keep playing this game if he wants to, but I'm going to win in the end. And Julia says, well, I mean, at the end of the day, you might as well just go ahead and let, um, you might as well go on and let Melissa claim that Cole was the real, real father since, um, you seem to, you know, kind of be done with Lance anyway. And Angela was like, you know what? That really ain't a bad idea. You know why? Because I don't have a whole lot of use for Lance. And the longer he stay away, the easier it's going to be for me to go ahead and let Cole replace um, replace him. And maybe I will. But she, want them at, she wants those vineyards. But she knows that if she moves Cole into pole position, that she can get control if him and Melissa get together. Like, she playing chess. And Julia sees it. Julia understands what's going on, and she sees that Lance is slowly but surely, the more he keep playing hardball, he gonna inch his way right on out of anything dealing with Falcon Crest. Now, um, Chase, he could show up late to a meeting with, um, Angela, and you know, Angela was not here for it. She was like, listen, the vineyards don't stop running just because you run around here playing cops and robbers. And Chase ends up leaving. Come to find out, guess who was in um, Angela's office the whole time while they were supposed to be meeting? The private investigator. She done called up the private investigator, and now she trying to figure out from the private investigator what's going on down here to the to um what's going on with this investigation. What information have you found? What evidence do you have? Right? And um, so he double crossing Chase. Maggie tried to tell you Chase that that want nothing here. Tried to tell you want nothing here. Now, back up to Falcon Crest, we got Julia, Melissa, and Lance. Lance has showed up to get a loan from his mama. Melissa is doing what Melissa does best, giving, you know, making making shots. You know, making shots at, you know, Lance and calling him all kinds of crazy and you ain't this and you ain't no kind of a husband. And Julia lets him know. Julia says, listen, you know, I don't mind. You know, you my son. You know I'll give you the money. But at the end of the day, all I ever wanted from you was your love. Like, that's it. That's all. That's all I wanted was your love. And he was like, you know I love you, mother. Georgia was like, yeah, whatever. Like, if I hadn't given you this money, you would be over it. Like, you wouldn't have nothing for me. Anyway. So, the sheriff shows up while Maggie's getting ready to go on this business trip I had told y'all about. The sheriff shows up, and he's got an injunction for Chase. And basically, it's, it's, it's basically telling Chase that he needs to stay the hell out of his business, stay out of official um, uh, business, um, and let them handle it, and let them figure out who the hell is out here, who killed Andrew and Greggy. Maggie was like, see, I told you, like, you out here starting problems, and now you got a whole injunction. You got the sheriff mad at you and everything. So next time somebody come through here and rob the house, they're going to show up a little bit slower because the sheriff don't like you because you over here getting in his business. Now, Angela done rolled up on Philip's girlfriend. Remember the girlfriend that Philip been hanging out with? Well, come to find out, she is married. And not only is she married, she is married to a politician. So Angela done threatened her. Angela done said, listen, I pay Philip well. For him to be on call 24 hours a day, seven days a week, okay? And my expectation is for him to be available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And I don't need him distracted by you. And so, I don't know how you, how your husband would feel about the amount of time you spending with Philip. And at first, she was giving Angela tip for tat. At first, she was going back and forth with Angela. She was like, me and my husband have an agreement. I mean, have an um, understanding. He do what he do and I do what I do and it is what it is. Angela was like, yeah, but he's a politician. How do you think the voters would feel about this arrangement y'all got? Now, remember, y'all, this is the early 80s, you know. So then she was like, don't threaten me, Angela. Angela was like, ain't nobody trying to threaten you. I'm just telling you what it is. I'm just giving you the real. I'm just breaking it on down. So, you know, she give Angela the, the stank eye, but mm, you got to do what you got to do, girl. You got to do what you got to do. 
Now back over to San Francisco, Lanston took this money his um grand his mama then gave him, and instead of you know leaving it in the bank and maybe you know looking for a job, he went out and spent it. Now granted, he spent it on his girlfriend. He bought her some perfume. He bought her you know some earrings. He bought her some champagne. I'm thinking, damn, how much money did your mama give you? And she was like, Lance, how much money did you spend on all of this? And he was like, why does it matter? She was like, it matters to me. What happened to that job interview? He going to say, oh, they called me, you know, um, they postponed the interview. She was like, they postponed the interview. He was like, yeah, you know, I mean, I don't know if I want that job anyway. She was like, Lance, listen, I'm going to need you to understand that this is not a game. Like, I get up every day and go to work because I got to pay my bills. Okay. And now that you are living here, I need you to be contributing to the household. I don't need no perfume. I don't need no new earrings. I need half the rent. I need half the light bill, electric bill, cable bill, phone bill, whatever bills that's coming through here. And you are doing a whole lot that I ain't asked you to do. And so, you know, of course, Lance was like in his feelings about it. Because, you know, he a spoiled little rich kid. He don't understand that concept. When you get money, you spend it. That's what you do. Now, Richard is down to the globe looking for his stopwatch, the stopwatch that his daddy gave him. Baby, the stopwatch is gone. Diana just sent the stopwatch back to his daddy. He was like, what you mean you sent it back? She said, well, he called and he asked for it and it is his. Richard was like, no, it's not his. He gave it to me. It was mine. And let me tell you something. The next time you decide that you're going to do something like that without running it past me first, you can go where that stopwatch is. Like, Richard didn't already warned her about her loyalty. Now, while this is going on, Chase is at the house. They wait for Maggie to get home from her business trip, which, of course, she was late getting home from. And, of course, Chase was all in his feelings about. But they get a phone call from the gardener down to the Andretti place. The Andretti place, excuse me. And remember, the gardener is who they was looking for down in Chinatown. And he was like, Chase, I want to talk to you. Now, this was part I ain't figured out yet. Did the sheriff set him all the way up? Like, the sheriff, they got the guy to call Chase to, to set him up? Or did the guy really call Chase, but they was following Chase? And so that's how they knew. Well, either way, the sheriff was sitting out there waiting for Chase. And as soon as Chase met up with the dude, he ran up on Chase and arrested Chase because he was like, you are interfering with an official investigation. Like, when that guy called you, you should have called us. And Chase was like, but he didn't want to talk to y'all. He wanted to talk to me. And the sheriff was like, it doesn't matter. That's not your job. It's my job. Let me do my job, sir. Let me do my job. So Chase ends up getting arrested. Maggie got a gum. Um, I mean, well, she ain't bailed him out of jail. He got out on his own cognizance, child. But now they arguing. And Maggie mad. And he mad at Maggie because he was like, well, you should have been here. We were waiting for you for dinner. And she was like, listen, my flight got delayed. But, um, sir, you got arrested. That's a whole nother conversation we're dealing with here. Okay, you got arrested, sir. And so um, they get to arguing back and forth. And, you know, they just not in a good place. And she was like, Chase, I really need you to understand this is serious. Like, you are playing games, and this is a real serious thing. Like, people are getting killed. Our son almost got killed because you are, like, let the police handle it. And at the end of the day, if we don't ever find out, we don't ever find out. He good. Cole, Cole good now. Chase ain't trying to hear that. Now, Melissa and Julia are having a heart-to-heart. -heart. And Julia is letting Melissa know, listen, ma'am, let me tell you something. You can keep playing hardball if you want to. But grandmother is about done with you and with Lance and these games y'all are playing. And Melissa was like, what are you talking about? As long as I got control of the um, vineyard, I'm good. And she was like, mm -mm, you don't understand my grandmother. You don't understand my grandmother. You don't understand how this goes with my grandmother. And at the end of the day, I'm telling you what I know. You either need to figure out a way to get back in her good graces or you're going to be the next one up out of here because if you and Lance get divorced, she has no use for you. That's it. That's all. So Melissa hightails it down to... Um, Melissa hightails it down to San Francisco and she just happens to ca catch Lance while he's coming up out the shower. And Lance is like, well, what are you doing here? And, of course, Melissa's being Melissa. And, you know, she's, you know, talking about some, um, how long are you going to be down here playing house? And, 
you know, you got the, the little girlfriend this, and, you know, doing all that. But, baby, while they get to, while they arguing, the girlfriend comes in the house, and Melissa hears that key hit that lock. And the minute Melissa hits that key hit that lock, baby, she starts kissing Lance. So, as the girlfriend opens the door, all she sees is Lance pulling away from Melissa. Now, it could very easily look like Lance only pulled away because he heard her come in the door, which, of course, is what Melissa wanted. And Melissa sashays her way on up out of there. And Lance is like, listen, I know that looked bad. Lance, she was like, just go. He was like, what are you talking about? Like, you know, like, I, you got to know that that was a setup. Like, I ain't tripping off of Melissa. She was like, you can go. Like, you can go. And he was like, I don't believe this. So she puts him out, honey. So next thing you know, we getting ready for Richard's party. We got Angela, Julia dressed up. Philip comes in there and he is mad as hell at Angela, okay, and he was like, you threat, you you threatened him a girlfriend, like, what is that about, and Angela was like, I don't know what you're talking about, all I just simply told her was that it would be a shame if anybody found out about what was going on, and he said, Angela, look, I've been trying to get with you for a year, and you keep playing games with me, at the end of the day, I love what I do, and I love my job, but this is not my life, I need more, I need companionship, I need love, and Angela was like, whatever I, I what are you talking about and she he was like listen she said all i'm saying is that i pay you and i want a return on my money and she said he's he's um and i want my i know she said i want your loyalty he said i wish you would understand that you have my loyalty i just wish that you didn't think you had to pay for it and he walks out baby and of course angela's like well philip well, fill up. Like, I think she realized that maybe she might have went a little too far, honey. Well, they get on. Everybody heads on over to um, Richard's party. So, we have um, Lance talking to one of the owners of another vineyard. And Lance says, I mean, Lance, is, he about sealed the deal to be the new, you know, um, operations manager, which is what he was doing for Falcon Crest. Baby, Angela sees what's going on, and she heads on over there, honey. And she basically sabotages the whole deal, tells the guy, yeah, I had to fire him. He was in over his head. I mean, he's my grandson, and I love him. But, you know, he was <laughs> he was a little in over his head. So the guy was like, well, wait a minute. Like, I guess he was like, well, damn, if your own grandmother fired you and you couldn't handle it, I don't know if I need you running my running my spot and Lance was like what you, like I'm good like we good I'm good we good like don't listen to her like I'm, I can do the job um because of course Angela's trying to force him to come home and then um who shows up at the party my girl <laughs> Emma baby Emma showed up at the party and of course everybody is shocked to see her and Emma is talking about how great things are, how she had to go for therapy, but she's in a much better place. And she, of course, she knows she still knows how to get under her mother's. Um, she knows how to get under her mother's um, nerves. She calls. She said, "What's up, tricks?" And you know her. You know Angela hates when she says that. And of course, Angela. As soon as Emma shows up, Angela is trying to get her out of there. Angela, I was like, "Come on, Emma, you need to go home. Come on, Emma, you need to lay down." Emma was like, "I ain't been to a party in a long time. I ain't going nowhere, Mama. We good." And she just kept picking the whole time. But it was great to see Emma. It was it was really good to see Emma. Now, Angela is also getting under Lance's skin. Because what is whenever she get mad at Lance, what does she start doing? Prancing Cole around on her arm. Making it seem like Cole is the next heir apparent. Which, of course, that's what she wants. You know, she wants um, Lance to get irritated by it. And so that's what she's doing. You know, she's, she's prancing around. Now, Melissa rolls up on Chase and tells him, Chase, listen... I hate to be the one to tell you, but you might want to fire your private investigator because your private investigator is working for Angela. Like, he double dipping. So, Chase goes to um, confront Angela, and Maggie is like, can this wait? Like, do you have to do it today? And he was like, I have to do it today. Absolutely, I have to do it today. And she was like, why the fuck? Like, why? Like, we don't, why we can't wait till tomorrow? So he rolls up on Angela, and he confronts Angela. Maggie leaves the party. Angela, of course, does what she does. She denies it and tells him, you're being crazy. You're being paranoid. Like, for what reason would I have to want to sabotage 
um, the private investigator. And he was like, I don't know, maybe you had something to hide. And she was like, oh, that would make you happy that I was the one that killed Angretti. Like, really? I ain't had nothing to do with it. Um, you know, he ends up leaving. She ends up stalking off. Then we got Melissa and Lance. Now, let me tell you something. Through a 2021 lens, this scene is very disturbing. He yanking on her. He pulling on her. He jacking her up. She slaps him. He slaps her back. It's it's a very disturbing scene from a 2021 lens, okay? But, you know, from a 1983 lens, it, it is what it is. Um, but they get to going back and forth because Melissa remembers what her mama told her. I mean, what Julia told her. And Lance remembers what Julia told him. And basically, Lance kisses Melissa. And Melissa, that's when she slapped him and he slapped her back and then she kissed him and next thing you know they they kissing each other honey and they came to an understanding that listen we need to go ahead and make this marriage work or at least try to make this marriage work because both of us going to end up on the outside looking in they get back to the house that night and they let angela know that you know they are that lance lets her know i'm moving back in the house and me and my wife are back together and she was like, mm-hmm, well, you know, you're going to have to start from the bottom and work your way up. Listen, Lanston started from the bottom so many times. I don't know how the hell he keep getting his job back as operations manager. He keep getting demoted and promoted and demoted and promoted. That's why he don't care. That's why he don't care about nothing Angela say, because he know at the end of the day, all he got to do is apologize, and he right back where he started. Now, down to Chase and Maggie's house, baby Maggie done packed herself a bag. She said, I can't do this. I'm tired. And I can't do this anymore. And Chase was like, don't you think you've been a little dramatic? She said, no, I'm not being dramatic, okay? You got the sheriff running around here giving you injunctions. You're getting arrested. you confronting Angela in public. You basically accusing her of being a damn murderer. You didn't hide this private investigator that done double-crossed everybody. No, I'm not being melodramatic. And she leaves. So, baby, we will see what ends up happening. Y'all let me know what y'all think. Drop it in them comments. Peace.